You know the old saying, hurry up and wait? Well, this is a case of wait, wait, wait for it. Okay, now hurry up. Because oh, the anticipation that has built over the past two years of planning and building to get to this moment, the moment when we would finally move aboard our dream home. Well, this is it. And now we have exactly three days to get organized, provision up, and sail this fresh out of the boatyard HH44 out of the country. Because these catamarans are built for export, meaning we have got to export it out of China and we have to do it before the biggest, longest holiday of the year, Chinese New Year, which starts in, you guessed it, three days. This will be our first night on board. We decided to stay because there's too much to do to leave. And I don't know if we'll actually get any sleep tonight because <laughs> this boat has to be ready to go by the end of the day tomorrow and we're still... A little ways away. Yeah, it's pretty obvious. <laughs> <laughs> not close. We're not close. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Can't even figure out where to put stuff to move it out of the way so we can put stuff away. Good night, John. Thank you. Yeah, good night. So that's John, he's one of the crew that's gonna join us. If it's like eight o'clock at night, he's like, I I'm gonna go home, but you have to shoot some video because it's real bad now, but it's gonna be real nice tomorrow by the end of the day. And, and you just, you gotta do it. So he picked up the camera, hit record, and <laughs> the day just went like that. Now it's dark. There's a beautiful sunset, a lot of rain, a lot of boxes coming, and we just totally didn't film any of it because it's just too much. Well, we have made a lot of progress. Enough that we can get rid of all this plastic. So it feels a bit like unwrapping a present or like an unveiling. I don't know why it feels like a big deal, but it feels like a big deal. So we are having a glass of wine and that is exactly what we're gonna do is unwrap our present, which is this boat. <laughs> Quite excited about this. because Look at those carbon fiber tables. I can still smell the varnish. <laughs> <laughs> it does rotate and all that sort of jazz, but we'll leave it small for now. Do I trust me with a pair of scissors? No. Okay, I was going to get a pair anyway, but I guess not. Where if I like a present? All right. Unwrap something. Grab a cushion. Okay. Everybody. Grab and then we got to get the tape off. Yeah. Okay, on. The wine safe? Yes. Yeah, it's far away. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Nice. Okay, we only have the whole rest of the boat today. Yep. Oh, I take the rest of the hours. <laughs> You've got wine. I've got chocolate. We got music. Clearly, it's low tide this morning. It's a foggy one. It's a little chilly. Believe it or not, our boat is going to go out into this river, through that bridge, and out to the customs anchorage in about five hours. Yes! I can't believe it's here. <laughs> Woo! All right, all right, focus. We still have work to do. Time is officially up. This is cast off day. Not departure day, but cast off day. So we have well, yeah, the boat looks like a real boat now and no longer chaos, at least, somewhat. Anyway, yeah, so it's a bit of a weird feeling, so we're going to watch the boat leave and then we have to go uh, stay in a hotel for the night and then in the morning we meet the boat at the customs dock and we go through our exit process and then we're allowed back on the boat and we have to take off, so... I, that makes it all sound very simple. It is not simple, but yeah. So we are at the, this is the tail end. Oh, they're putting down the blue. Yep. It's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. Oh, ho, ho. All our shiny new fenders. Check them out. You remember these from the can boat show? Good old fender text makes the best fenders I have ever seen. We have some very beautiful covers which I cannot wait to show you but I chose not to put them on because apparently the uh, dock at Customs is pretty gnarly so I just, I don't know, I'm being very protective of all my shiny new things. So we'll just start with this for now. Everybody's 
here for a send off. We've got Paul and James and Hudson, Molly, Molly Anna, Mike, Hardo, everybody. All the important people are here. Because it's to get rid of all the bad spirits, right? <laughs> oh, Molly's getting shy oh, now. She's so shy, Molly. <laughs> it means a brand new start. It's a good luck, a brand new start, warded off all the bad spirits. So now we're gonna have a perfect passage. You know, be good. Okay. Bye, Hudson. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. Hey, it's been a pleasure. Yeah. Oh, You're happy to see us go. Don't yeah. lie. It's just because he's on camera. Tell him how it's really been, Paul. <laughs> You're ready for us to get the hell out of here. <laughs> Down and dusted. Oh, no. Oh, no. You built us a beautiful boat. Yeah. Yeah, it looks beautiful, doesn't it? Thank you, James. Thank you very much. It looks good. Yeah. Well done. Well beautiful done. Boat, guys. Seriously. Well done. It's a beautiful, beautiful boat. Best boat looking of the 44 year. in the world. Yeah, yeah. Many happy sailing adventures. <laughs> Look forward to watching it, huh? If you break it, you buy it. <laughs> We thought one last visit to the temple would be a, a good place to start this big adventure. And, well, and a good place to end this adventure. It's such a beautiful place, such a peaceful walk up. <gasps> with a beautiful view to finish it off. This is our last few hours here in China. We've got one more sleep and then we are officially live aboard sailors again, which is very exciting. Not much more time. This is it, our last walkabout. Our last small horse. <laughs> oh. No, no. Oh, 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 okay. I think we have to stay in. <laughs> oh, sorry. The guy's like, don't open the door. <laughs> It's a very specific process for customs this morning, and I'm not sure what the process is. We haven't gotten a very good rundown on that. Okay. Now okay. get out. Oh, okay. Now we're allowed. This is our crew this morning. We've got Anna and Molly, who are like our right and our left hand, essentially. <laughs> they keep us in line for just about everything. And uh, we have got Kyle, who is our commissioning captain. We have got, of course, Casey, who is crew. We got Mr. Wu, the famous Mr. Wu. You haven't really been properly introduced to him, but if you end up building a boat at HH, you will know Mr. Wu. He is the man. He oversees so many things. He's like the factory manager. It's great. And then we've got uh, John, who is also joining us for the passage. We're going to have a very full boat. How are you feeling this morning? Feeling great. Ready to go. <laughs> Good morning, Molly. Good morning. <laughs> morning, Mr. Wu. Good morning. Morning, Anna. Good morning. We're getting the rolls, and based on the wind, we want to make as much southeast progress as possible towards the southern tip of Taiwan, but we can't get too close to Taiwan. So we have to stay at least 12 miles away, so we're going to set like a barrier around. You want to follow all of the rules. And you don't want to be. And you don't want to be close to Taiwan. No. <laughs> Yeah. You fly. There she is. Oh. Beautiful. I'm <laughs> missing. <laughs>
I know, I'm going to see too. <laughs> Molly's been amazing. She's our best friend at HH. She's taken care of us. She's made sure the boat is perfect. She made sure we're good. We love you so much, Molly. Thank you very much for everything. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, we love you very much. We're going to miss you. You have to come see us, okay? Yeah. Yes, you will come visit. Okay. Yeah, I turn off the camera for me to hug her. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Anything. Bye, Anna, you've been amazing. Very much. Channel 69 so they can contact us. Yeah. We should have really impressed them and just gone for the electric. electric I know. <laughs> then they might have thought, no, it's not working, something's wrong. <laughs> Jason might need to catch that line. Okay. Sorry, I took your job. <laughs> no, that's okay, it doesn't matter. That was an experience to say the least. Not at all what I thought the morning was gonna be like, but it was interesting. They were uh, very, I guess, excited to have somebody leaving the dock and it's not something that happens very often. So there was lots of documentation going on. And uh, yeah, we are underway. It's just after 10.30 and we have officially left the dock. It's pretty wild. We're doing it. <laughs> such an exciting day and an exciting morning and started out with uh, coffee at 6 30 and then it's kind of been non-stop ever since then I have a feeling it's gonna be still a pretty long exciting day feeling like I've got so much to figure out getting underway I don't know it feels weird don't know the boat enough yet don't uh, yeah just so I don't even remember where all, I put all my stuff like <laughs> I gotta figure out where to where I put all the food that I need to cook today. All that sort of stuff. So anyway, I'm gonna have myself a little pick me up. Get this boat a rocket. A huge thank you to AG1 for sponsoring this video and for supporting our whole body health because it is incredibly difficult to get all of the nutrients that our bodies need to stay energized and focused even when we're eating all of our fruits and veggies. And it's easy as with just one scoop in eight to 10 ounces of cold water, shake and enjoy. And while it may be green in color, it is a tropical, tasty pineapple meets vanilla flavor. And AG1 is intentionally designed to replace multiple supplements with a comprehensive blend of multivitamins, minerals, prebiotics, probiotics, antioxidants, superfoods, and the list goes on, which is why AG1 is our number one all-in-one foundational nutritional supplement. And you were gonna need that. Focus. That's I right. Need to focus. Yeah. Focus. <laughs> Adaptogens. Oh. No stress, it's all good. If you wanna give it a try for yourself, which I do highly recommend, then head to the link in the description and AG1 will give you a year's supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five travel packs for free with your first purchase. It's just solid white. Oh yeah. You can't see anything out here. I mean, it's just like sailing into the void. So pulling out of here, it was a little different. Boat of towel. <laughs> yeah, exactly. New boats. And I'm trying to do the non heads up on the display because that's what everybody that's proper sailor, they're like, you can't do heads up, you have to do north up. So it's totally, everything's totally backwards. <laughs> <laughs> now would not be the time to try to learn too many new things. Yeah, I, I, I'm good. If I feel like I'm, I'm losing it, then I'll call for help or flip it to heading up. Or you can just go to heading yeah, but I want to I try this way while well, it's calm. Got Kyle here doing some testing on the engines, capturing some data. John on watch over here. KC, well, it's setting that Starlink up. I got Starlink ready and I gotta wait until I leave Chinese waters and then I'll turn it on. Yeah. And then Nikki. Trying out the induction for the first time so far, so good. Making my first meal on board, very exciting. 
Yeah. What are we having? These are like a, they're like bean curd strips, so it's almost like tofu noodles. It's very popular in China, and I really love them because they're nice and meaty and good texture. Now with some other veg and a uh, sesame dressing on top. So that is our, our first official meal on board. It's, and that's crazy to think about, really. <laughs> I can't, like, we've been moving on and trying to settle in and everything else, but we were just eating with, like, everybody else at the factory for each meal because it's just so chaotic. So, yeah, first time to use everything. It's very fun. It's like a new surprise every time because I don't remember where it, I just, just shoved everything in places in sort of the general areas. It took me forever to find the food and then my spatulas. Anyway, get it now. I've been working up a few little extra lashings, tethers for the tender, just in case. A little temporary something. I'll make something permanent later on, but three loops and a, a bowlin with a lot of locks and a long tail on both sides. Let's take a moment to introduce you to the crew. First up is the HH Catamarans team. Kyle is one of HH's commissioning captains and John is joining the rigging and commissioning team at the factory in the Philippines. Then there is arguably our best crew member ever. Okay, Casey, what are you doing today? What's I'm getting our Predict Win Data Hub up and running. He and his wife Erin are longtime patrons. They're owners of HH44 Hull Number no. 5, and both of them are retired SpaceX rocket engineers. We've become good friends over the past couple of years, and Casey has been invaluable to say the least. We've got it hooked into the boat's NEMA network and a GPS antenna. This will give us tracking so everyone can see where the boat is. And then for us, we will get live weather. So we get weather updates and boat performance information with it. So it's pretty cool. You can see it right there. What do we have? What, what's going on? Looks like something's stuck around the prop. Yeah. Oh, so much for the rope cutters. I know. They probably cut the big rope and left the little rope. Oh, uh, so John, John is... has volunteered to go in. He just likes swimming here. Right now. <laughs> <sighs> oh, it's <just> cold. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just gonna check that it's clear. Okay. This is uh, totally refreshing. <laughs> day one, John saves the day. <laughs> well done. He's off to a good start. Got up here on the, the heck's happening? Busted a U-turn right in front of us. It wasn't territorial, I don't think. It was just like a jerk move. He's a dredger. He was coming out. He decided to do a U-turn right in front of us, turn around. Then he dumped all of his stuff as he was heading back. And he lifted up out of the water like 20 feet. So I don't know what that was about. Maybe he just wanted to see our boat. I don't know. Nobody was out on the, on the bridge like waving at us or anything. We just got a little honk. So... Who knows? It's weird though. Officially out of China waters. Yep. International now, baby. Take our flag down. Well, day one so far. Off to a good start. It has uh, been very calm, which has been really good because it's given us lots of time to kind of just settle in without any real chaos and Kyle needed to do some engine testing and stuff to report back to HH and so this kind of really was the perfect day for that and then of course just kind of getting used to the boat because we've just focused on moving in and getting all of our stuff in here and hurry up and get the heck out so there's been no time to like settle in so it doesn't feel like our home yet it feels foreign it's sort of like staying in a hotel room or something it's but I would say, I, yeah, I don't know, like an Airbnb or something like that, because it doesn't feel like ours. It feels like something I'm still getting used to. Like, I know it's fine and I'm excited to be out here, but it feels foreign, very foreign. <laughs> I was just coming up, I was like, it feels like sunset. Maybe I should get up and check on everybody and see if I need to get some video. Do you need me to shoot anything? You can go back to bed. Are you sure? Yeah. Do you need the microphone or anything? I got this. Okay. Eh, eh. Huh? Why are you wearing it? Oh, so good. <laughs> it's so good. It is ours. It is ours. Just feels weird. Mm. Just feels weird. Okay. Okay. Go back down and get some rest. 
I'll see you for dinner. Is it near me? Okay. Although I probably have to walk into it. Couldn't ask for a more beautiful start to our sail. Super calm, glassy water. Bright, bright, bright stars. You can see Orion's belt, you can see the Milky Way, you can see just everything. It's gorgeous. Bioluminescence can be cut through. Just beautiful, beautiful night. Slightly chilly. Speaking of chilly, Nikki made a wonderful vegetarian chili for dinner. Some garlic bread. Man, she's a beast. I can't believe she can do it. And she's like prepping soybeans and walnuts to make a uh, fresh nut milk in the morning. I don't know how she does it. She's just uh, she's just crazy. Or she really loves me. One of the two. I don't know. But yeah, what a beautiful night. We got some wind coming up in like six or eight hours. And it'll start to get fun and then it'll uh, get real exciting after that. So. It's 9 o'clock, 9.30, my shift ends at 10, and then I go on standby till midnight. So, I'm gonna enjoy this beautiful sail. Motor sail. This morning we were able to kick off the engines. We got a little breeze. We got one reef in the main. The Solon is out. We are cruising along at about nine, 10 knots of speed and about 15 to 20 knots of wind. Seas are starting to get bigger because we are nearing the very bottom tip of Taiwan. And that's when the wind picks up even more and sort of comes a little more on our beam. So, should be an interesting day. Had a lot of fishing boats last night, but not as many as I expected, which is a welcome surprise because I was Concerned, when you look on AIS here, you see hundreds, thousands of boats when you look at it, but it really wasn't too scary, not undoable, so that was very nice. And Nikki's down below, having a rest. I'm on Sunrise Watch, which is one of my favorites, so it's all good. And we're sailing. We are moving. Woo, first time. <laughs> it just feels great. Wow. <sighs> Two years. Yeah. Yeah. Dolphins. We're not going very fast, so they probably won't stick around. Yeah, there they are. Oh. Hey guys. Yeah. One has a white nose, so he really stands out. Aww. Very nice. Right? Just playing. Yeah. Checking us out. Couldn't ask for anything better. It's like a little bit of wind, a little bit of waves, but not too much. A little bit of calm, a little bit of motoring, lots of testing. It's just been great. Dolphins, I mean, what more could you ask for? It's been, what, 36 hours at sea? I had a shower, I feel good, I smell, I smell good. I didn't wash my hair clearly. 
Yeah, it's been beautiful. I've been thinking about it a lot, thinking, I never imagined we would own a boat like this. It's pretty cool. It's still sort of surreal. There's so much learning we have to do about each other, this vessel and I. I'm looking forward to it though. So far, she moves very steady through the water. She's so quiet. It's just such a completely different experience. Uh, I just don't even know how to describe it all. It's just being out of sea. Mostly today, I've just been reading manuals, trying to <laughs> make sure that I understand and know how to use every device and every little thing on this boat. And then just enjoying the day, because it's so chill. And tomorrow might not be that way, so. Anyway, loving it. Find the sheets. Find the hat. How's it going so far? So far, it looks good. I found this sitting on the trampoline. It's part of the block. Bust it off. I have to go check everything after we arrived at the Philippines, check all the bolts. Loctite everything. <laughs> it seems so weird. not want to run this over with the traveler. That would be bad. <laughs> Ooh. Yummy. Clean those solar panels. Whew. Yeah. <laughs> It's a big sail. It's a really big sail. I don't even have a camera big enough to capture it or wide enough. But I have some really wide lenses. Oh man, that feels good. We are doing uh, eight and a half knots of speed and 13 knots of wind. Woo -hoo -hoo. That was close. Eggs flying everywhere. English cheddar. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Man, we are eating good. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Nikki. Thank you, Nikki. Okay, you're going to show mine too. Mine with the, the pear apple. Hey, John's got some oats. There's some muesli and the pear apple. 
cross between a pear and an apple. Whoever would have thought that. It's lovely, right? It's a beautiful, yeah. beautiful fruit. Yeah. I think all things considered, this has been a really good passage. We've had a little bit of everything. Last night was definitely more sporting. The seas have built a little bit. We had higher winds, but nothing too crazy. It's just enough that you kind of have to, you know, put some reefs in and then shake them out the next morning. And now we've got the spinnaker up. And so we're kind of going through everything, kind of getting a feel for the boat. We're doing a ton of testing as far as um, with the hybrid eco drive side of things because we do have different props than what they put on 01 and 02 just because again, they are just testing everything, trying to fine tune, figure out what the absolute best combo is. So we have a lot of numbers and reports that we need to give back so they can kind of do a final programming for us and our system. So it's not like working as it will in the end with the new programming, but it's still working exceptionally well. It's very exciting to be cruising along right now and just pumping in so much power. And it really doesn't take away that much from our speed. You know, it doesn't slow us down that much. So we are good on power, like just has not been a thing so far, which is really nice. We've had lots of clouds. We've had motoring that we've needed to do. We've done some electric motoring, some on diesel. And then of course now we're sailing and pumping in the region. So all good on that front. I feel like there's just so much to dial in and so much to talk about. And I feel like we've got to get a grip on it first before we start sharing too much about it. But so far, so good loads of power we're running everything i'm using everything not feeling like i need to be conservative about anything but now see now it's getting hot so we've gone from like cold weather or, or cool weather to now we're going to be in full-on sweltering <laughs> heat which means everybody's going to want those acs cranking so that's where I feel like the true test will come in. How much power do we really have? Is it enough to run the AC on the boat through the day and through the night? I don't know, but maybe with the region, I guess we'll find out very, very soon. And look at all that solar. I mean, it just makes me so happy. See, I'm sitting on some of it right now. No thanks, we got plenty of it. dishwasher on board. Casey's also getting the dishwasher at his boat. Okay. Same exact one. That's a lot of boats. Oh, it's something. It's like a, a flotilla out there of what I don't know. There it is. That's what the AIS is going off about. A fishing buoy maybe. Your laptop looks so tiny next to the big screen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Doing some last minute paperwork, the uh, agent that we're using messaged us and said, by the way, we need a COVID vaccine, even if it's old. <laughs> we just need to have proof that you, you did it. Like, oh, crap. <laughs> <laughs> thank God we have Starlink. <laughs> Casey, thank you. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> yep, Starlink to the rescue. <laughs> Otherwise, we would not be able to check in. Oh yeah, we couldn't send this stuff. No. Can't no. send photos on Iridium. No. Do you feel like to give us a tour of the, uh, <laughs> oh, of our, the Starlink install? Our fancy Starlink install. <laughs> yeah. Yep. We uh, temporary install. We have Dishy just uh, sitting in the dinghy, hanging out on its tripod, 
aimed up at the sky. It works okay. Our roof blocks some of it, so we don't get perfect signal, but it's good enough. We're just running the cord. It's temporary install, so we just run it. Tape. We've got a Wi-Fi router sitting up here. And then it's plugged in. Super easy. Temporary yeah. install. <laughs> Probably too big. It's probably not going to work. Oh, it worked. So great. So one of the other perks of having a uh, electrical engineer is whatever you need to change out all your plugs from the Chinese plug to the European plug. We have somebody on board that can help me do that. So I've never done this before. So um, we're calling this arts and crafts time, and Casey's showing me how to change out my plugs. Just barely tight, or yeah, yeah. Don't go crazy. This on the neutral. Let me get like, yeah. Uh -huh. So some exposed metal on this part. Okay. Yeah, we got at least that one right. We don't, there's not really a great way to test the others. Okay, so there we go. One appliance down. Only about eight more to go. <laughs> got all a bag full of plugs there. See, it's what you do. Lazy days at sea. But speaking of, a lot of people are gonna wonder why do we have 220 volts? European appliances. So Casey, you're getting the same thing on your boat. You want to tell us why 220 versus 120? Because the power standard for 220 versus 120 is you get basically twice the power for your standard outlets. So American appliances are generally limited to about a thousand watts. That's what your microwave is. And European appliances are generally limited about 2,000 watts. So all your cooking appliances will get hotter faster with European or 220 style power which means everything will be a bit more efficient, which means we make better use of all of our power on board. And... You can dry your hair faster. I can dry my hair faster, and I can make toast faster, and all of things. <laughs> and the wires can be smaller for the same device, so the same amount of power the wires can be smaller. It tends to not be as big of a deal on a boat, because you tend to, wire size for most of these appliances tends to be more about how robust the wire is. You can't make the wires that small anyway. And if, unless you're going to be sailing in the U.S., then, which we mostly have been abroad and we plan to be, then most everywhere else in the world operates on 220, not 120, so it's much easier to buy an appliance like we did in China and just swap out the plug if we want to, and that's an easy fix. So it means it's easier for me to buy replacements later on or buy new appliances. I uh, and if it explodes, we blame Casey. I just checked the old one. Seems to be working fine. Uh -huh. Oh, here. So I just checked Coolio. the old one. Coolio. It's a label on here. Oh, okay. Good. So much fun. Yep. Solent furl. Release that. This. We can go ahead and open that. Wait, what are you doing? Uh, we are going to tension up the solar block. All right. Some wrinkles out. Three, two, two. So there's a little Dyneema loop at the very top, and he's using the reacher halyard to connect and pull the sail tight so that way he can tie that Dyneema loop even tighter. It's a brand new line, everything's brand new. So they rig it as best they can and then once you sail on it, it just needs to be tightened up. And it's not something we'll have to do very often, but it is something that has to be checked. And when you see little wrinkles in the solent, you know it's time to go back up and tighten it. Obviously it's much easier at the dock, but such a calm day, he's very experienced. 
he said, let's do it now. Bang some stuff off the list. Coming, Dad? He's on the hard top. It's calm as hell, but it still bounces a lot. It's different up there. Oh, yeah. We are at the 50 hour mark on our diesels and it's time to get rid of the factory oil and put in some fresh clean oil. And Kyle did the starboard side. I watched him. He showed me all the tips and tricks because this motor has a built in oil pump, which I've never used before. I always carried that big plastic thing that, you know, just sits in your lazarette and gets rusty over the years. So this one has one built into the engine. Hopefully with the electric motors, we only have to do this once a year because of the yearly service. It's good for me to know and good for me to film it so that way in a year when I turn around to do it again I can watch this. Yep, yeah, yeah. Tiny drop down there. That's Not good. Too bad. Normally we would wait until we were there, but mine as well. Join in on the fun. Yep. Everybody else is doing projects. Kyle showed me a nice trick. You just cut a little hole in the towel, the shop towel, and that creates a little splash guard for the funnel. Factory didn't have any small jugs, so we've got a massive one. Industrial size. Yeah. Let's see. Don't screw it up. Just go with the smell. What? It looked like it was going to work well. You spilled the drop. Okay, what, one more was, time. what was that? It's one drop. One drop. One drop. Shame. Woo, Bumpy! We forgive you because we are at sea. For <laughs> <laughs> uh, our last boat, I would have been like, ah, what's another 10 hours? <laughs> uh, would have been a little warmer. Yeah. Granted, the, the first oil change they were saying is the most important because it has the special oil in it that you have to remove, and it's got all the metals and everything that's from the new engine that gets like in that oil and grabbed in that oil so you want to get it out right at 50 hours. Okay, last step here, we're just going to double check the anode. Make sure it's not eaten up. Eh. Maybe we should get rid of it. Maybe we should, yeah. <laughs> it's a little crumblier than I expected. I thought it was all there, but it's not. See, car open. Okay. We are ready to fire it up. Sounds good, water's moving. Checking the oil filter for any leaks. Clean, check the anode for any water. Clean. We're good. All done. All done. Woo! First oil change to sea. First oil change on the new boat. Touching. Well, we are only about 24 hours away from our check-in point in the Philippines. Subic Bay, here we come. That's right. It has been Boy. a wild journey so far. Everything, and literally everything. Everything. Except I, for a disaster. Right? So that is the good news, yeah. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. I'm like, it's all felt so hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. And it's crazy because here we were on this long, exceptionally long wait much longer than we anticipated followed up by like hurry up and get the heck out of here so then it's felt so intense yet we've gotten so lucky with like no issues with checking out of the country and sailing out that could have gone completely different yeah, no issues in that little spot under the, the taiwan like where the taiwan straits and that little southerly part it could have been terrible but it was just a little exciting. We got so lucky with our weather window. I'd love to be sailing a bit more, but it's still been good. We've gotten to kind of exercise all the systems on the boat. It's like, as far as a shakedown cruise, I don't think we could have asked for better. So that's it. We'll uh, get to Subic. We will do a few warranty things. There's really not much on the list. And no. then we'll tidy everything up, organize as best as we can. Not like the full on organize, because I think no. that's going to take a couple <laughs> months to sort all that out but 
then we'll maybe go somewhere beautiful, anchor, and do a tour. Yeah, we have got so much to show you on this boat. So many things that we haven't really yeah. gotten into yet. And that, we're gonna do that. Because yes. you've been waiting a long time. We've been waiting a long time. And that is, yeah, that's what's happening next. So thank you so much for watching, being a part of all of this. And uh, we'll Sounds see like you. it's time to put the sail away. <laughs> See you next time. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Here we go, one last look. Beautiful.